Greetings, this is another Gullah observation. What happened in Savannah, Georgia was a historic moment um, on last night. It was a meeting that was held in Savannah of community leaders, leaders, ministers from all denominations, business leaders, businessmen, businesswomen. It was the average citizen here, neighborhood association presidents, concerned citizens, community activists, potential political candidates and political candidates. Uh, political officials were also there. Elected officials were there. College students were there. College students to elders, 80s, 70s. So you saw a range of people from the African-American community of Savannah there at that meeting. It was organized by a nonprofit. And as I share it, folks, it was a family meeting, a family meeting. But what has happened, oh, I should tell you this. In that family meeting that occurred, that some of you are probably not aware, it was beautiful. It was beautiful in the sense that people who had diverse attitudes and opinions coming from diverse backgrounds were able to sit down and talk and have a dialogue, have a dialogue that doesn't happen and has not happened in our community for decades. It has not happened in our communities, in this community for decades, in the black community. Other people talk and they have dialogue constantly. In our community, we don't do that. We finally had something, a public, and it was open to any anyone in the community for this family meeting to sit down and to listen, and have a dialogue. And again, people had different views with regards to some people felt that they should support the current mayor. Some people were there. I told folks, some people support the current mayor. You have some who are saying they want to have a new mayor here in the city of Savannah. And then who will be that new mayor? You had groups of people who had different opinions. You had the candidates also there. But what was remarkable about that meeting? No one was mad with one another. Everyone expressed their thoughts and their opinions freely. It was a wonderful meeting. It was not anyone being mad. It was no acrimony, anything like that in that meeting. It was people, intelligent people, talking amongst themselves. This is the first in Savannah for many people in their lives. That has never happened in Savannah, Georgia, but that happened on last night. But what occurred, that it was something outside of the group that put it on and the people who were there. As I said, responsible community leaders. This was not, as some would say, rabble-rousers and radicals. These were responsible people, intelligent people, who were concerned about the city of Savannah. So they did this, and they sat there, and they talked amongst themselves and said, hey, we got to have a further dialogue. They handle, this, handle themselves well, maturely for the city of Savannah. And folks express their concern for the entire city of Savannah. Unlike others who say stuff, we know two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, people were saying, taking the city back, getting their city back, saying that type of stuff. That was not the conversation. They were saying, our city, looking at everyone who lives in this city, regardless of economic level and ethnicities. But what has happened is that the media, the local media, has created a controversy. And some of us are sometimes, and I'm going to say this right here, I'm going to piss people off right now. Some people are so god doggone stupid that they let the media control them how they think all the time. Wrong, and they are wrong about it because even the people in the media are not bright people. Some of them are not bright. And you know this for a fact, some of y'all. You know some of them are not bright because you have conversations with them. So because what happened, because some people in the media said they were offended because they said only black media. I guess I need to elaborate on this. Give you all some history as I had to share with some folks. I was there because as a historian, I need to be there. And as I told one media person in the media um, outlets here, I said, I need to make sure I was there to get the correct uh, 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 story with that happened. Because I said, I know you all going to twist it. And that's what they did. They twisted it to that only black media was allowed. I told folks, if the Savannah Morning News wanted someone there, they got black reporters there at Savannah Morning News. But they didn't let some a black reporter come there. They could have easily came and sat in. Even the reporters from WJCL and also WSAV were allowed to come inside and sat there. And then when one of them started to write, take notes, they told them, say, no, 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 we got you in here because you're a member of the community. But you're not here to be taking notes. We want to have a dialogue. We want to have everybody, hear, hear everyone's opinion with regards to this. But then instead, w, uh, Savannah Morning News sent someone who has not been a friend of the black community. People on the west side, I'm saying Carver Village and Cloverdale will tell you about this person right here, the reporter, has not been a friend of the black community. Has, in fact, 
listen to them. They'll tell you, some of them, and I can call some people out, tell you, they tell you, say, in fact, when they had thought that they were going to have their voices heard regarding issues where they felt that the city of Savannah did not treat them fairly, that person did not even listen to them, wasn't listening to them. It, they were giving them the city line. And then people were saying, well, wait a minute, the city has not treated us right. So you're not being objective as a reporter. So here it is, what they understood that Black media, Savannah Herald, Savannah Tribune, will give us a good understanding about what transpired and a fair assessment of what transpired. That's what we need because we know, and as I share, folks, you know the Savannah Morning News, so the Savannah Morning News historically makes us look bad. They put us down, and but have other people looking great when they're doing the same thing, being just as wrong, just as evil. We see news stations making us look bad, making us look awful. That we want handouts and all that when you got other people doing it more than any black person here in the city of Savannah and in Chatham County. We understand injustice happens because some of y'all saying right now, how can somebody like Paul Manafort get the sentence that he gets? And we look at the disparities in the criminal justice system regarding sentencing. We see all this right here. We see all of that. We know that. And again, they paint the picture of us negatively and don't give us good. Don't put the good news out about us with how we're excelling. The black media, that is Savannah Herald, Savannah Tribune, will do that. So we felt that that will be, and I'm not saying I'm not the organizer, but I'm just saying, as in general, black people feel that they're going to give us a better chance. They're going to give us a fair shot, unlike the other larger media outlets. Because you have no concern. You just want to promote scandal. And that's what they did. They promoted scandal with regards to a good event that happened for the black community. So I'm saying to African Americans, you cannot follow up with them at all about this because it was something that was for you as a family to discuss. And then you can go out to everyone else and talk about what you want to do. Because again, as I said, there are people there who support Mary DeLoach. People going to support Van, going to support Regina, going to support Lewis. They're going to support, and they're going to support some other people come out also. They're going to support those folks, but they have an opportunity to have a dialogue they cannot have in other places. Oh, that's what I'm going to get to right now. As I shared with one media outlet, I said to them, I said, listen, you all are Johnny come lately. You don't know our history here. Me, my family's been here since at least 1814. So I invested in this area longer than some of you. If you know anything about this area, they did this in the 1960s, 1970s, and 1950s. This is what they did. And in the 1800s. And in fact, I tell you this, I wrote this a piece several years ago. Savannah Morning News has been on the wrong side regarding the black community from the 1800s. They, in the 1800s, they were on the wrong side. And in the 1950s and 60s, they were opposed to desegregation. I'm going to repeat. Savannah Morning News was, de was opposed to desegregation of Savannah. The mindset is still there. So again, so you have people telling people on the west side of the city of Savannah, don't get upset about the arena issues when there were promises made to y'all. Don't get upset about that. Be happy. No, those folks saying no, respect us. And that's what happened last night. You weren't respecting us. And so again, we're not going to just go based on you just saying a promise. No, we want the truth. We want to, we want to see tangible stuff. And that's what you're going to have to get to the point of being tangible with us. Tangible with us. This is, we out the window. You know, get, get out of that madness and that foolishness. So, but what happened, Savannah Morning News did, will not report on those downtown associations, all those associations that do not have black folks coming into their facilities, coming to their meetings that they hold. They hold private meetings to try to change the city of Savannah. They hold private, I'm going to repeat, they hold private meetings that the Savannah Morning News and others, I should say, other people in the media outlets who in the city of Savannah are aware of, they are aware of it and they know it goes on. But guess what? They say nothing about that. So where's the fairness in that? Because you all know, like I threw out Chatham Club, Oglethorpe Club, you say, well, that's a club. But guess what? Also, those people are also a part of other bodies. Where you hold other meetings, where you go, you sit at the tables and you discuss this community and making changes, not for the betterment of all people in the community, but just for a certain segment. That's what people are saying, wait, stop. We don't play that anymore. There might be some other people who'll be quiet about it and let you do it. No, there's a new group of people here, new group of leadership here in this city. Good people who's standing up and speaking out. That stuff will no longer be tolerated. You cannot go and try to paint the picture of us, try to tear down our political leaders and act like, oh, they're wrong about this. Our community leaders like they're wrong when you got other people doing the same thing right here and they are even more, they are vicious where other people are being good. So yes, 
They know about it. You got some organizations that even political, we have political leaders right now who when someone tried to walk in to a meeting, they were escorted out because they didn't have the right mindset. And these were Caucasians that this happened to by other Caucasians who didn't like the attitude of this person, right? Because this person was about fairness and parity. But the Savannah Morning News and no one else said anything about it. You don't say anything about that type of stuff. You say nothing about it. And now let me go back in time, and some people are going to really get mad about this right here. Any of y'all know about the PAC? The PAC. The PAC did the same thing in the 70s and in the 60s. Savannah Morning News knew about it. WJCL knew about it. WTOC knew about it. WSAV knew all about the PAC and how the PAC operated. But they never said anything about any of that when somebody maybe from the Heralds or Savannah Tribune or any other writer for them could be at PAC meetings or WSOK also, and then, which was our radio station. Savannah Morning News said nothing about it back then. And you know why they didn't say anything about it, the media outlets here? Because the PAC was essentially doing the bidding for Caucasian politicians here and business leaders here in the city of Savannah. Oh, my God, Jamal, you just messed up just then because now you exposed some stuff because we made the PAC seem like this, right? The PAC had impacted the lives of people who are in their 30s, their 40s, their 50s, their 60s, their 70s, their 80s, and going up to their 90s in the city of Savannah. But none of those news outlets who are not complaining right now said anything about any of that in the 70s because it was helping all of them because they were supporting John Recycus. They were down with John Recycus. They were down with the people because, again, and the pack was centered on African people and with Caucasians basically directing some of the stuff. And there'd be black media right there. They never said anything about that. They were not concerned about that then. Now, all of a sudden, because you got this new leadership in the black community now saying that those type of games will no longer be tolerated. We will speak for ourselves. We speak for ourselves and we tell you about our communities. If you want to know about us, come to us and talk to us. It's no longer about you dictating what will happen to us. Savannah's a majority black city and with a, a majority black registered voting population right here. There's no equity in the city of Savannah. Poverty rate 27% for black folks here. And it's unfair. And some of y'all want to hold on to the reins and keep it amongst yourselves as opposed to trying to take care of the people in the city of Savannah. Tourists come here to the city of Savannah and don't even realize that Savannah got black folks here. And then you got the pact that has been in place in the 1970s, 1960s, and Savannah Morning News folks had no issue with that. TOC folks had no issue. SAV people had no issue. JC Health people had no issue with, with that back then because it was all good because they were controlling stuff. They were still controlling stuff and not black folks saying, we want to have our own family meeting and not have you involved in this right here. Oh, I got to throw this out here. And you can't get mad with me about what I'm saying. Because as a young man, there was another paper that was here called, I think, the Georgia Gazette. The Georgia Gazette, before it folded, it did an expose on all the stuff I'm talking about, right? A lot of stuff I'm talking about right now. I should say parts of what I'm talking about right now. How the recyclers regime and other stuff like that was going on, the stuff that they were doing, and then how the PAC was involved. But again, yeah, the media outlets, once again, once again, I go and say the media outlets said nothing about it. It was business as usual for them because they were making money off of it. And the black community was still impoverished, had streets in the black community with, that was still dirt in black subdivisions. Bowles Ford Park was supposed to be just like Lake Mayor, and today it's not like it at all. And then you're going to get mad with us because we're not going to say we got to have a family meeting here in the city of Savannah for us to talk about issues. And then we discuss those issues intelligently. That's what we did. Not you trying to incite us. And then I hear, and this was so evil that you all around here trying to make a good meeting into something evil. And then sadly, you might have some people, misguided people, follow up with that. As I tell folks, talk to the people who were there. Last thing I share with you all this. I told folks it was fitting for the meeting to be held at Bolton Street Baptist Church. Not just with regard to the civil rights movement, but guess what? The neighborhood that Bolton Street Baptist Church is in, or oh, not, not neighborhood, it's not public housing development called Fraser Homes. Fraser Homes and Caton Homes once was a black community called Currytown, a black neighborhood that had Victorian homes. Oh, Jamal, you said Victorian homes. Yes, Victorian homes were in Currytown, owned by black folks. Businesses were right there. Oh, and not far from Currytown was a place called Springfield. Springfield, a black another, another black neighborhood. But guess what? You will not know Springfield at all because Springfield now is known as I-16. 
Oh, let me share this about MLK, that same area, Bolton Street Baptist is on, used to be called West Broad Street. On the other side of the family rehab was a vaudeville theater right there, black on vaudeville theater called the Pekin Theater right there. But it got wiped out, tied to again, the whole eminent domain process and other things like that. But then also what happened too, on the other side of St. Philip's AME Church is a place called Popeye's. Popeye's once was Monroe Funeral Home, a black owned funeral, a black owned funeral home right there. Now it's Popeye's. But then on the other side of that is the Burger King that used to be the Else Club, if I'm not mistaken. A black nightclub right there, the Else Club. But then on the other side of that is where the oldest black business in Georgia was located at. Again, I'll repeat, the oldest black business in Georgia. Bynes Raw Funeral Home. Yes, our Bynes Raw Funeral Home. It's the oldest black business in Georgia. It was located where the Wendy's is today. And they had to sell the property for peanuts because they were told all, well, I should say, all of them had to sell the properties for peanuts because they were told they're going to put I-60 on their property. Yes, that's what they told. But you all see what happened to the properties, right? They got sold to fast food corporations. A part of I-60 on the property, but guess what? So they took the land from black folks and then gave it to or sold it to those corporations. It was a black bank on the other side, and then also the Dunbar Theater and Dunbar Hotel. And then also Union Station. Now let me tell you about preservation that's in the city of Savannah. Preservation is the city of Savannah are upset about what happened about I-16 coming in and getting rid of Union Station. Do you hear the crickets? That's what happened. Preservation is talking about Union Station being lost, the train station being wiped out. But they say nothing about Springfield being wiped out, Currytown being wiped out, and Frogtown being damaged. The black neighborhoods were wiped out and us losing black businesses. No preservationists talk about that except for the African-American preservationists such as myself. No one else talks about it in the other side. See how they don't even know our story, but we know their story fully. That's what it is. We know their story fully. They don't even know our story. But the black press knows the story when we give it to them. They know it, but here you go. They are not concerned about what happened to black neighborhoods right there. Black businesses right there. Oh, why I say all of that? Because in 1958, there were some backroom deals that went on. And the black community, when they found, they found out about it, they protested. They said, wait a minute. They said, they went to the palace to be right here. And say, wait a minute. You all know, you, this is wrong. Y'all targeting everything. Y'all going to wipe out our community. Y'all going to wipe out Currytown. Y'all going to fake Frogtown. Y'all going to wipe out Springfield. You, you put the brunt of all this, new, this urban renewal on our communities, wiping us out. That's wrong. But guess what? The backroom deals that they held, that the Savannah Morning News and others knew about, guess what? Nothing was said to us until it was too late. And we lost it all. We lost our communities. Currytown, Frogtown. But people knew about it. Backroom deals. But here it is. When we now go and finally begin talking about a family meeting amongst ourselves, people want to try to cast us as being wrong or cast a group of people who put it on being wrong. When black folks who were at that meeting were all responsible people and they said, finally, it's time for us to sit down and talk and let's have a dialogue, a dialogue. Other people do the same thing right here in the city of Savannah right now and no one says anything about it. They don't invite the Herald to come to their meetings or Savannah, or Savannah Tribune to come to their meetings when they're discussing the business that's going to impact all of Savannah and hurt the black community even more. Thank God for Reverend James Sims. Thank God for Dr. Ralph Mark Gilbert. Thank God for W.W. W. Law. Thank God for those people. Because that gave us the understanding that we have to stand up and speak out for our people and come together as one.